Miss Marsha, will you come up here too with me for this time? We'll have the baptism families come up here. I just think it's proper this year up here since, since these are your kids. <laughs> well, that's the way it is. <laughs> Yeah, I'll show you guys. You see what's in here? See that? Water. You know what water is used for? Water is used for lots of things. Um, if you're thirsty, got a, oh, a nice glass of water. That's so important. Because we, we can't live a long time without water. So the way we're made is we have to have water. And you know what? You're out on the playground or something, and you get stuff all over your face, some dirt, or on your, your clothes, and it's got to be cleaned. You need soap and water to clean things up. So water does two important things. It's good for us to keep us alive that way, and it's also good for cleaning. And that's what Jesus knew in, when he's talking about baptism. What we do is just simple. He says that my word along with water, will clean you. Clean you not from the dirt on the outside. You look pretty sharp there all in your suit, and I don't see any dirt in there at all. But you know what? I know inside we have lots of dirt. We have sin. And that's what Jesus says, that he's going to clean us of our sin that we have through this. So we make our beginning in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And that word, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, is what I'll say to you as I put this, this water on you in just a couple minutes. Let me explain a little bit about this. Here's what Jesus says. If I can find my page marker, I'll be all set. In Matthew chapter 8, right before Jesus goes up to heaven, he says, go therefore and make disciples, make Christians out of all the people. And he tells us how. He says, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey all that I have commanded. And in the book of Mark, it says, And this promise is for you and your children. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. So we baptize, we come. And someone was asking me, how does that work? How does this clean us and make us God's child? And you know what? Even though I'm the pastor, I don't really know. I do is I trust that what God says. Jesus says, this is a way to show that we have been made clean. And we do it because we obey what Jesus is telling us to do. And we're forgiven uh, in that way. So in a little bit, when I put the water on your heads, it's just that Jesus is saying, you know what? You are my child. And as his, God's child, we know all those things that you're learning with Miss Marcia in her classroom, those things that God loves us, all those different songs to be strong and courageous and those different things that, that God is with us all the time. And as a result of that, that we have somebody who loves us and forgave us. Uh, and that's what we'll be uh, talking a little bit about here. So receive God's cross on your forehead, on your heart. Forehead, a cross there. And see, crosses are all over the place. We have cross there. We have a cross up here, and there's one back there, because the cross reminds us that Jesus came and he died on the cross for us. And then it says, in our baptism, it's like what he has done on the cross becomes ours. That when he died for us, and who was buried, in, then we are buried too. And when we come out of the water, when the water's on us, that same way that when he came back to life, that we have that same forgiveness that, that comes through that. Sincerely, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. That wasn't too bad, was it? Landon and Anderson, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
Caden Anderson. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, you have just claimed these boys to be your own. You said through the water, through the word, that what you've done on the cross is now theirs. That means forgiveness of sins, life and salvation that comes to them. Help us now to teach that to them, that they would grow in that faith and they would realize that they are never alone. In your name we pray. Amen. Part of what I gave you right there is a symbol of what we call the robe of righteousness because it reminds us that our sin is covered. You notice the robe, I as a pastor, see when you see me here on most days, I'm not wearing this, am I? No, you're probably looking at me saying, <laughs> like, like an, I look like an angel. Oh. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> you all remember that, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and because in baptism what all of our stuff has been covered and that's what this reminds us of is I am like an angel and you're like an angel too that our sin has been covered by Jesus blood and righteousness and then so this little part here is just to remind you that the same thing that you've been covered in that blood the other thing is, Jesus says that he is the light of the world. And that when we are in him, we become that light. And so as you are being baptized, we light a candle. You think about candles. We light candles on, on birthdays to remind us and celebrate. So this is a thing to pull out perhaps in, on, on Mother's Day next year and to remember that you were baptized, that Jesus claimed you to be his own uh, through baptism. give you that candle as a remembrance of today too. And you know what? I know that it's a, probably a good ch I, chance that you're not going to remember everything about this. So we also give little certificates, things that you can hold on to and remember this day, that this is a special day. On Mother's Day of 2015, on May 10th, God called you to be his child and through holy baptism. So that's an important thing. You guys can uh, go and sit down again. We'll sing our final verse to, to our hymn at this point. Maybe. Hit the next slide. 